Hello. In most of my problem solving videos on actuarial exam 2, we do problems from the Mathematics of Investment and Credit, 6th edition by Samuel Broberman. But as happened in chapter 1, I found the content here now at the end of chapter 2 to be kind of uh, sparse as far as problem sets related to continuous annuities. So I'm once again going back now to the book by Kellison, The Theory of Interest, 2nd edition, to look for problems in there. There are more problems to choose from related to continuous annuities in that book. So this is going to be problem 4.47 from that book. We're going to be finding the present value of a continuously increasing payment stream for a given force of interest. A payment stream is a cash flow where you're getting money every minute, every second, every millisecond of every day for a certain amount of time. Problem statement, as you can see, is very short. You might stop and think about what this perhaps what this means if you've never seen it before. The A stands for present value. The infinity stands for the fact that this is going to be some sort of perpetuity. The I stands for the fact that it will be increasing. And the bars, if you've never seen those before above the I and the A, mean it's a continuous payment stream in this case. I want to take the opportunity before we solve the problem to think more generally about what's going on with continuous payment streams. So let's imagine a timeline here. And let's go ahead and take a a finite amount of time from 0 to n here initially. Ultimately, we're going to let n go to infinity. And let's imagine we've got some function here. It doesn't have to be constant. It doesn't have to be increasing. That is representing the payment stream, cash flow. It's really a rate of money flow might be the most descriptive way of saying what it means. It's important to think about the units for such a thing. It would be in an amount of money per unit time. So for example, this could be dollars per year or euros per month or yen per day. There are lots of different kinds of things this could represent. Um, to, before we think about the time value of money and the present value in such a situation, let's just think about what H of T itself means without thinking about time value of money. Imagine a particular moment in time, T, and imagine an infinitesimally small amount of time goes by. Really, really tiny. Now, what is an infinitesimal? Well, in the standard real number system, there is no such thing as an infinitesimally small number. There's something called non-standard analysis where such numbers do exist, but most people only think about ordinary standard real numbers, and the idea of an infinitesimal is just a convenient fiction to help you get to the right answer as quickly as possible, and it does provide some intuition. If you think of this as a tiny a positive amount of time, and this is an amount of money per unit of time, the product h of t times dt then represents the actual amount of money that flows during this tiny interval of time. This would be an amount of money that flows from time t to time t plus dt. Um, it's, so we're treating that as if it's a multiplication, but ultimately this is something we integrate. Before we integrate, though, we want to think about uh, present value now. What would the present value of this money, amount of money be? This is really a nominal amount of money in name only it's the dollar amount, for example, during this particular amount of time, how would you find its present value back at time zero? Well, in the general case, you'd need to multiply by the reciprocal of the accumulation function, a of t, take its reciprocal, a of t to the negative one power, times h of t dt. This is going to be the present value of that amount of money, that payment that happened during that short interval of time. To find the overall present value, then, of the entire income stream, the total present value, you might say you need to integrate this from 0 to n. OK, and that's going to be the present value. And if this were ultimately a perpetuity, if h of t went on forever, you'd take the limit of this thing as n goes to infinity. And that's what we will ultimately do. What are these things in our situation? Well, in our situation, h of t is something simple. It's just t. Okay, That's what this i stands for. It's an increasing annuity. The simplest kind you can think of, h of t is t. Straight line going up would be the graph of h of t. What about the accumulation function? I am assuming 
compound interest here because I have a fixed force of interest. The accumulation function is going to be e to the delta times t, e to the 0 0.08t, and so it's reciprocal. The discount uh, factor will be e to the negative 0 0.08t. And so ultimately we're going to integrate the product of t with e to the negative 0 0.08t. Actually, let me do it in the general case. Let me go ahead and replace the 0 0.08 with a delta, and we'll see what it looks like in the general case, and at the end we'll plug in 0 0.08. You might recall that in integrating something like that, t e to the negative delta t in this case, that you need to use integration by parts. Let's go ahead and just do an indefinite integral first. Using integration by parts, we can let u equal t, and dv be e to the negative delta t dt. du will be dt and v will be negative 1 over delta e to the negative delta t. Okay, um, so we're going to go ahead and find the antiderivative here. u times v is going to be negative t over delta e to the negative delta t minus the integral of v times du the negative 1 over delta can come out front as a positive 1 over delta. It can cancel with the negative sign that was there and get an e to the negative delta t dt here. And now we can integrate this second integral to get our final answer for our antiderivative. Like that. Okay, and we can go ahead and use this to finish the problem. I am going to all right, let me go ahead and do that. I'll go ahead and use this to finish the problem, but I'm actually in the end going to go think about it another way as well. Um, so we want to evaluate this thing again. Well, what would I A N be for some fixed number N? It would be integrating this thing from 0 to N. So I need to evaluate this antiderivative from 0 to n, and I can get rid of the c because that will subtract away. I can take this part and evaluate it from 0 to n, plug in n, I get negative n over delta e to the negative n, delta n minus 1 over delta squared e to the negative delta n. Subtract what you get when you plug in 0, we're going to get a 0 um, minus, plug in 0 right there, e to the 0 is 1, you get a minus 1 over delta squared. Two minuses here make a plus. We can get a common denominator of delta, delta squared actually. And in the end, we can write this as one minus n delta e to the negative delta n minus e to the negative delta n over delta squared. This is one way to write the answer uh, for this quantity right here. Sometimes you'll also see this written as 1 minus, take out an e to the negative delta n, and write in parentheses 1 plus delta times n over delta squared. Uh, let's let n go to infinity now. As n goes to infinity, this quantity is going to go to 0. You can use L'Hopital's rule to verify that. This is growing. This is decaying to 0. It's an exponential decay, so it goes to 0 faster than this grows to infinity, so to speak making this product go to zero. This whole thing goes to one over delta squared, something pretty simple, as n goes to infinity. And that does allow me to finish the problem now. So I a infinity, when delta is 0 0.08 is going to be one over 0 0.08 quantity squared. Let's go ahead and see what that is. Get my calculator. I think that was the answer there. Uh, 0 0.08 squared is this. Take its reciprocal. Yep. 156.25, it looks like on the dot, is what this is. And that is the answer to the question. But let's take a few more minutes to do something else here. Um, let, me once, let me go back to the integral. And let's go ahead and think of this integral as a, um, a definite integral this time. And let's go ahead and use integration by parts again with the same u and dv as before. But I'm not going to ultimately 
um, finish this problem in this way. Instead, of what I'm after here is an alternative formula for I bar, A bar, sub n. Uh, so I'm looking up here. I'm going to have the uh, 1 over delta integral from 0 to n e to the negative delta t dt. And what I want to do is I want to say that this integral here on the right represents the present value of some payment stream as well. It actually represents symbolically something we write as a bar sub m, the present value of a payment stream, a cash flow, a rate of money flow, where h of t is the constant function of 1. Okay, for that situation, and I guess I need to evaluate this from 0 to n as well. So what are we going to get if we leave that as an a n is the idea here? Uh, I need to plug these numbers in here. I'm going to get a negative n e to the negative delta n minus negative 0. I get a 0 there when I plug in 0 for t. And then I have plus a n bar all over delta. More commonly, this is written as a n bar minus n v to the n over delta, where v is e to the negative delta, the discount factor. Okay, and so this formula is sometimes useful. We could have used it here to figure out the final answer over here. We could have let n go to infinity here, though you do need to know the formula ultimately for a n bar by doing this integral. Um, let's go ahead and quickly derive that. Here's your antiderivative. Evaluate it from 0 to n. You're going to, oops, end up t there. We need, um, going to end up with 1 minus e to the negative delta n over delta, which is the same as 1 minus v to the n over delta. Uh, so you could use that. You'd have to recall also that, let's see, um, v is e to the negative delta, so you'd have to use that fact as well. Okay? Thought that was worth doing, even though it makes this video kind of long.